Welcome to Volatility Trading Strategies. My name is Brent Osichoff, and today I'm going to outline what I feel confident in saying is the best measure of market volatility that you'll find anywhere. Better than the VIX index, better than volley, better than the VIX futures. What I'm going to show you today is called the VTS Volatility Barometer, and it may very well dramatically enhance your investing. Now that's a bold claim, I know. It sounds like one of those YouTube ads where you have to wait five seconds before you click away from it. All I'm really missing is the private jet and the Lamborghini in the background, right? But trust me, this is nothing like that. If you allow me a few minutes of your time, I'm going to prove it to you with real numbers. So let me show you what I mean. So if you're watching this video, chances are pretty good you're familiar with the VIX index. It's the most popular and widely referenced measure of market volatility out there. If I had a nickel for every article quoting the VIX index, I'd have that private jet and Lamborghini already. But there's a couple of problems with the VIX. First of all, it's actually a very poor measure of market volatility and does a terrible job predicting forward market prices. I'll get into a specific example proving that statement later on. But the other problem is it's not the only measure of market volatility. There are actually many. I already mentioned the volley and the VIX futures, which in my opinion, both of them are probably a little better than the VIX. But there's also the VIX 9D, the 3M, the 6M, 1Y, there's VVIX, SDEX, TDEX, SKU, there's different ways to measure implied and historical volatility, the volatility risk premium. There's moving average crossovers, standard deviations, average true ranges. I could go on and on. There's many indicators out there and all of them are trying to measure volatility. Well, I've got something that I feel is better than all of them because it is all of them and more. The VTS volatility barometer is all of my best volatility metrics that I use in my trading combined into a single index. Currently, I'm extracting information from 13 different metrics. Higher percentage values represent periods of higher volatility, and lower percent values represent periods of lower volatility. So you can see the day I'm recording this, at the end of March 2019, it's at 41%. That number is a current percentile ranking of all previous values. So a reading of 41% means that overall market volatility right now is in the lower 41st percent of all previous levels back to inception. And it can also be viewed on a standard chart like any other index. This one here is for the past one year or 252 trading days, but I can also show it for any other time frame. And I've highlighted the chart into red for the top 30% of higher volatility readings and green for 30% of the lowest volatility readings just to make it easier to see. So here, for example, is that high volatility period during Q4 2018, which was one of the worst quarters for the S&P 500 going back many years. Aside from a few days, the barometer stayed above the 70% line the whole time. Again, it's not an absolute reading. It's a relative value compared to itself over time. That's what makes it so useful. One single value that not only represents overall market volatility, in my opinion, better than anything else out there, but it may also be predictive of forward market prices. Now that's a bold claim, I know, but let me show you. First, I'll focus on equity trading and show you how I used it to avoid every single major market correction since the financial crisis. After that, I'll demonstrate with real numbers how it can be used to navigate the volatility ETP market and turn products like SVXY, UVXY, VXXB into manageable trading vehicles. So what you're looking at here is the minus 18.77% market crash in 2011. This was the European sovereign debt crisis. Now what successful traders need is a reliable method of filtering out the noise and determining when to exit stock positions before the damage is done. Obviously it's not very useful if it's during or afterwards. So on July 25th, 2011, which is right here, the VTS volatility barometer went above the 50% line and it didn't get back below the 50% line until December 9th, which is there. Using this simple indicator, exiting stock positions when it goes above the 50% line would have avoided the entire drawdown. But maybe that was just lucky, right? So now let me go through every 10% or more crash that the stock market has suffered since the European debt crisis. The next major market crash greater than 10% was in 2015. Now since this was basically a double dip with two distinct crash periods, I'll go ahead and divide them into two sections. In this first section, the volatility barometer broke above the 50% line here on August 19th, 2015, and it didn't break below 50% until October 9th. 
Looks like it was lucky again, avoiding the entire drawdown. But who could have predicted we'd see another crash just a couple months later? Well, using the barometer, a trader would have been very skeptical of the recovery because it was showing elevated readings leading up to it. And on December 30th, right there, it went to 57%, kept rising, and didn't break below 50 until March 1st of 2016. The next test for the indicator was the big Volmageddon or Volpocalypse event on February 5th, 2018, which was the largest volatility spike since October 1987. But on January 29th, 2018, right there, my volatility barometer shot up to 65%, warning that something might be up. A few days later, disaster. Because of the early warning, I exited all of my stock positions and all of my short volatility positions in the final week of January, and I'm glad that I did. I'm glad I had an indicator to get me to safety beyond the simplicity of the VIX index or some of the other volatility metrics out there that are slower moving. And as a result, I actually made a little profit in Feb 18. So the barometer was over 50% from the 29th of January 2018 and didn't dip below 50% until May 4th. That makes it 4 for 4 in avoiding drawdowns. Let's look at the last major crash that happened just recently. Q4 2018 was a nightmare for many investors. It was one of the worst performing quarters in the S&P since the Great Depression, crashing a little over 20% at its bottom. But for me personally, I was up a bit for the quarter because I moved to bonds in early October. I guess you know where I'm going with this. To be clear, I don't have a crystal ball. I do, however, have an indicator with a really good track record. The volatility barometer went over 50% on October 4th, 2018, and didn't get back below 50% until about six weeks ago, right there. That's five for five, every S&P 500 crash avoided. If I were to use the VIX or the dozens of other volatility metrics out there, it's really hit and miss. If the VIX index is spiking higher or VIX futures are in backwardation or the volatility risk premium dips negative, Oftentimes the damage is already done, and those higher elevated readings are just a reflection of what's already happened. The volatility barometer, though, is just more comprehensive and also much more sensitive to smaller moves. As a result, it can potentially give warning signs a little bit earlier, and it's been very effective in helping me manage my own portfolio over the years. So that's equity trading. But now, for another way to show its effectiveness, this one's for all you volatility traders out there, let me show you another simple test. What you're looking at here is a back test that I ran using the VIX index itself to filter out the best 50% of trading days to be allocated to short VXX positions. Now, just a small side note, the VXX reached the end of its 10-year shelf life recently, so its replacement is called VXXB. They may change it back to the old VXX ticker, but in case they don't, I've labeled it with both, but it is essentially the same underline. And also, for an old-school guy like me who's been trading these products since they launched, It'll always be VXX in my head. But anyway, this backtest, starting on November 30th, 2010, which was a very important launch date for short volatility trading, there's been 2,095 trading days since then. All I've done with this test is use the VIX index to only short volatility during the best 50% of days when volatility is lower. That's when the contango effect and the roll yield is potentially the strongest. 50% of days equates to 1,048 trading days out of the 2,095 since inception. The rest are in cash. You can see the results here. The black line is short VXX performance using the VIX index as the filter. And the gray line is a simple buy and hold on the S&P 500. So it had a good run in 2016 and 2017 when volatility remained stable and low for 18 months. But otherwise, it actually underperformed a simple S&P buy and hold. Basically, the VIX index is not predictive of anything when markets are moving around more. As they say, everybody's a genius in a bull market, and so is the VIX index. But as soon as there's trouble, it doesn't pick up on warning signs nearly fast enough to be helpful. But now I'm going to show you the exact same backtest, with the only difference being I'm now going to use the volatility barometer as the filter. So just like with the VIX test, half the time allocated to short volatility positions during the lowest 50% of volatility readings, and the other half in cash, as simple as it gets. This is just showing the same 1,048 days in trades out of the 2,095 since inception. All trading rules identical, only switching out the filter. And here's the result for that test in blue. Quite a stunning difference the quality of the filter makes though, right? The VIX filter would only have produced 150.81% gain. But using the volatility barometer instead, 
it's over 1500% gain, and more consistent as well with smaller and more manageable drawdowns. That's the most important aspect of trading volatility products, because the truth is, periods of big gains when volatility is smooth is basically just inherent to the products themselves. They have had periods in the past with very impressive performance when everything cooperates, and there's no doubt in my mind they will again in the future. The volatility trade isn't going anywhere. But to navigate it successfully and manage those periods of uncertainty when things don't cooperate, that's when you need effective signals that pick up on the danger signs in advance. The volatility barometer that I've presented today is, in my opinion, one of the very best ways to do that. Now, all of my trading strategies are a little different. That's where the diversification comes in. But the volatility barometer is a major influence on all my trading, for volatility levels, and most importantly, risk management. For equity trading, getting out of stocks and perhaps into bonds and gold for safety. For volatility trading, to be short volatility during advantageous times, and long volatility during extreme levels. And option trading, to determine what type of option spreads to use and what general volatility bias to carry on them. For the VTS community, with members now from over 50 countries worldwide, the updated ratings are given every morning in my daily blog. So whether you want to use it directly or just as an overlay for confirmation and fine tuning of your own strategies, just as a risk management tool, it's very effective at either. Remember, the true key to long-term success is avoiding drawdowns and smoothing out performance over time. Avoiding any one of those major S&P 500 crashes could have saved a trader months or perhaps years of drawdown, so it's an invaluable tool. And for anyone else out there, if you're thinking you could also benefit from a great indicator like this, head on over to my website, claim your free trial, and see what the VTS community is all about. I suspect investing is going to get a little more difficult going forward, and we may actually see the volatility barometer spending a little more time than normal in that upper red range. So above all else, stay safe and good luck in all your future investing. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.